Well, hello again and uh, welcome to tutorial 26 in this series of tutorials aimed to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language Programming. And in this tutorial, we're going to be revisiting, looking at divergence between a stochastic indicator and price action. And this is something that we did in tutorial 4, only the way we did it in tutorial 4, and I have that open here on the screen, is as follows. We looked for a pivot, in other words this point here in the stochastic and the other pivot in the stochastic and then at that bar we took the price. So we looked for a uh, this uh, value of the stochastic being greater than this value and then we looked at the value of the bar here and the value of the bar when the stochastic took place and worked out that this needed to be less than or equal to this. Now the only problem is that is not the point where the pivots occurred in the price. The actual pivots occurred in the price here and here, depending on how you work out pivots. So what we're going to do, um, oh, and, and just to, to show you some other examples of that, uh, have a presentation here and you can see again that the stochastic pivot here occurred just, I think, slightly before the price. and. Um, we draw some lines here you'll see the price the price pivots occurring up here on the stochastic when the stochastic pivot actually occurred here and the uh, the price pivot occurred on this bar here when the stochastic pivot occurred a little later and um, this is a, a made up example but I'm sure it's perfectly possible that an indicator could have its pivots actually after and before the pivots on the price so what we're going to do in uh, in this tutorial, and um, just to go to uh, TradeStation here, is create a program that will use the actual values at the pivots rather than just assuming that the pivots in the indicator, in this case the stochastic, and the price occur at exactly the same time. Okay, so this is the program, and when applied, we should see something that looks a little bit like this. You can see the uh, divergence there occurring between the stochastic and the price and the program draws a little line. So let's just go through the program in more detail. The first thing we do is we calculate the stochastic just using the standard TradeStation uh, stochastic function and um, then we look to see if pivots have occurred in the price and this is using the pivot function standard TradeStation function here. One meaning the most recent pivot and two meaning the one that was before that. And um, the, the length we look is defined by length here which we have set up as a as an input at the top. And what we've said if this is not equal to minus one that means that basically a pivot has occurred. Or it doesn't mean basically a pivot has occurred. It means a pivot has occurred within the, the, the length number of bars. And uh, so we've said that uh, if that is true, condition three is true. If the um, not the most recent, the one before that is true, condition four is true. Now we've done something very similar for the stochastic, except this time instead of using price, we're using O slow D and incidentally price L is another input. You could set it to whatever you wanted it to be. At the moment it's set to low. Um, o slow D is calculated by the TradeStation stochastic function. So the meat of the program is down here where we say um, if condition 3, 4, 1 and 2 are true. In other words, we've got two recent price pivots and two recent stochastic pivots. But those pivots may not necessarily be near each other. So what we've done is introduce this concept of bar tolerance. And what I've said is if we take O pivot bar 1, and if you recall that is um, here, the uh, means that a recent pivot in stochastic has occurred, and subtract O pivot bar 3, which should be the uh, number of bars ago that the most recent price pivot occurred, and uh, the absolute value of that, in other words, if it's negative, make it positive. And if that is less than the bar total, or I'm in the wrong line here, but if that is less than the bar to the bar toll, then that's true. And we've done the same thing for O pivot bar 2, which is the number of bars ago that the second most recent stochastic pivot occurred, less the O pivot bar 4, which is the number of bars ago when the second most um, recent price pivot occurred, if that is less than bar tolerance, 
And then what, what we're saying here is either O pivot bar 3 is equal to the right strength or O pivot bar 1 is equal to the right strength. That means that we have just discovered a pivot and that pivot could either be in the price or it could be in the stochastic. So that's determining that we've got two pivots within tolerance of each other. What we then need to do is look for a divergence. And I should have said just up here that uh, if you're unfamiliar with the pivot function, when it does find a pivot, it will uh, return a couple of pieces of information. One is the value of that pivot. The other is the number of bars ago that the pivot occurred. So what we then do to look for divergence, we say that O pivot price 3 is going to be less than or equal to O pivot price 4. In other words, the most recent price is less than or equal to the previous price pivot and the uh, most recent pivot on the stochastic is greater than the, uh, st uh, the pivot on the stochastic that came before that. And then we're just going to run this at the end of the bar using bar status 1 equals 2. And uh, if all that lot becomes true, then we draw a line. So let's just go back to the presentation and um, just look at how that works in a bit more detail. So obviously we don't know it's a pivot until a certain number of bars ahead and that number of bars is called right strength. So let's just take this bar here and on this bar here we know that the uh, most recent stochastic pivot occurred O pivot bar one ago, three, so we count one, two, three. Sure enough there it is. The, um, the second most recent on the stochastic occurred 11 bars ago, so let's count that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and there we have it at the uh, the bottom there. And then you could do the same thing for the price bar. So pivot bar three, for instance, occurred four bars ago. So let's just make sure that's true. One, two, three, four. Sure enough, it's there. And O pivot bar four, 13 bars ago. And I won't I won't time that. So if we now just go to the calculation and uh, I've just reiterated those values at the top here. The calculation is abs value O pivot bar 1 minus O pivot bar 3 is less than the bar tolerance. So uh, O pivot bar 1 is 3, O pivot bar 3 is 4, so 3 minus 4 is minus 1. The abs value is of uh, minus 1 is 1 and 1 is less than bar tolerance. Well it is in our case because we've got the bar tolerance equal to 3. Let's do the next one and uh, this takes the uh, pivot bar O pivot bar 2 minus O pivot bar 4, which uh, if we do the calculation, that's 11 minus 13, and uh, that comes out as minus 2, abs value minus 2 is 2, and 2 again is less than the bar tolerance. So that takes care of uh, two of our calculations. If we just go back to the program, you'll see that we've got the condition 3, 4, 1, and 2. We've got the two things that we've just calculated. And then the next one is what we, what we need to do is determine that a pivot in the uh, stochastic or the price have just occurred and we do that by just checking that one of those O pivot bar values in other words O pivot bar 3 or O pivot bar 1 is equal to right strength and as we can see in this case O pivot bar 1 is it equal to 3. So if that is the case everything is true and uh, we um, uh, we, we, we first of all check that uh, divergence has occurred, as I just explained, and we draw the line. So anyway, um, I hope that that was uh, useful uh, for you. If it was, please feel free to sign up for our email list at markplex.com. And if you do that, I will be happy to email you and let you know when I create other tutorials or other information which may be of use to you. So thank you again very much for your attention.